So Bill, since the last time we spoke to you, we've had a lot going on in the Treasury market, but just talk about the move between Tuesday and Thursday first. Is the Treasury market now, today, and we have a 10-year yield back to, uh, I should let you know before I tell you, 2.853. Is it pricing in anything different than it was, say, last Friday? I wouldn't, you know, I would say that uh, looking at 10-year yields, I would, I would go back two to three weeks. You know, yields were on a steady rise, really dating back to September 8th. That's when 10-year yields hit around 2%. Uh, Five-year yields have risen 1.1% since that time. And we're approaching very significant support levels, for example, in 10s, right around 3%. And though that was a double top that we saw in September and 13, January 14, at the end of the taper tantrum. The market knows that's there. And I think it's a bit reluctant to sort of extend the bearishness even after uh, 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 Powell's bearish testimony on Tuesday to go beyond that at this juncture given oversold conditions and some other developments. If you go, if you go into the different uh, treasuries right now, on Tuesday we saw the belly of the curve, the five-year, the seven-year treasuries selling off. Today we see the uh, uh, modestly outperforming other yields. Why is that? Is that telling us a little bit about what investors are thinking about uh, rate hikes in, into the future? Yeah, I think that's why you know there was immediate underperformance in the belly of the curve, the five-year sector, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, but looking at the pricing for 2018 and 2019, still a lot of time to go and a lot of data between now and 2019. The market is pretty fully priced in three hikes. And that seems to be the center of the Fed's thinking. And I think that's why the five-year sector is performing a little bit better today after his second day of testing. I think in some parts, investors are even pricing in five rate hikes. Very, very little, but if you go into the verb go function, there are some investors that are thinking, ooh, five rate hikes. Well, I tell you what, Paul Tudor Jones is adding his voice today to those of Bill Gross and Ray Dalio and some others looking for higher interest rates. 3.75, I think, is what he is looking for as a conservative target by year end. So what are these people missing if they are missing something? I don't think they're missing anything. As a matter of fact, we at Citigroup have a lot of empathy for the view. Rising supply, rising trajectory of the deficit, still strong economy here in the United States, and all of these fundamental and quasi-technical factors do guide to higher rates. The problem we have is location. You've got this 3% area as a major support level after a 100 basis point move up to it that still hasn't even been touched, let alone breached. The three and a quarter level in 30-year bonds represents a very significant support level. We just don't think the market has the legs to punch up through. Meanwhile, and very importantly, we are starting to see some questioning or some cracks in the foundation of this notion of coordinated global growth. Seeing some slowing or deceleration in China, seeing the same in Australia. To a degree, if you look at the 20-day forward export data in Korea, starting to see a little bit of weakness there. Industrial metals, a lot of these same people who are looking for three to four handle 10-year yields pay a lot of attention to this uh, copper gold ratio. That's come off almost in a straight shot since the beginning of the year. In many ways, you can almost argue, at least locally in the next one to two months, that rates might actually be a little bit too high here.